Okay, so we're looking at critical z-value notation here. And the notation we're talking about is this kind of notation. It'll say something like z alpha. What they're trying to get at here is they want to know the z-score that will leave alpha area in the upper tail of the bell curve standard normal distribution. So what we're saying is, for example, we want to know on the z number line, where is a z-score, or what z-score is it, that leaves alpha area in the upper tail beyond this point. So we're trying to figure out what z-score is right there, so that the area beyond that z-score on the curve only leaves alpha area beyond that point. That is our z-alpha value. And our question is then, we see this notation, they're trying to say, you know, what z-score is that that leaves alpha area in the upper tail beyond that location on the z-number line? Okay, so let's do um, just you know, some quick examples where we put numbers in here just to make sure that you're familiar with what the notation is getting at, right? So I'm going to do a couple of drawings and talk about how you would go about finding the z-value. It's actually a skill we already have. So, I draw a bell curve here, and I said that the area in this tail is 0 0.01. 0 0.01, that means the area in the tail there is 0 0.01, or 1%. Okay, now, there's a Z number line below here. The notation for this location right here on the Z number line would be Z.01, because there's 1% area in this tail, the z-score here is called z sub 0.01. That's the notation. Okay, now, we can actually determine what that z-score value is. If I want to know what it is, right, z.01, if I want to know what the actual number is, I can use something we already learned how to do, which is to look up an area on the z-chart to find a corresponding z-score. Now, I know the area in this tail is 1%. That means the area from here to here must be the remaining 49% that's contained in this half of the curve, right? Because the whole area of the half, half of the curve is 50%. If this part is 1%, this part must be 49%. We can represent 49% as 0 0.4900. And if I look up 4900 on my Z chart, I will find a corresponding Z score that's associated with that. In fact, if you go to your Z chart right now and look up 4900, the closest number you will find to that is 2.33. So that would be the corresponding z-score here that leaves only 1% of the area in the upper tail. All right, let's do another one and look at another one. Let's say I had a drawing like this, and I was trying to figure out the z 0.025 value. Okay, so let's start with the notation. If I see z.025, it tells me that the area in this upper tail here, that area must be this area, which is 2.5%, or 0 0.025. Now, of course, if I wanted to figure out what that actual z-score is, if I wanted to know what z.025 was, and what I have to do is determine what? The area from here to here. Because we know that z-scores on the z-chart that we use look up areas from here to here, from this line to the center, in order to determine what's the corresponding z-score down here. Well, I have the area in the tail is 2.5%. If I know the whole area from here over is 50%, if I take the 2.5 away from the 50, I will get 47.50, or 0.4750. And once I know that that's my area from here to here, I can then do a simple uh, lookup of 4750 on the z-chart and find the corresponding z-score. In fact, if you go to your chart right now and look up 4750, you will confirm that the answer is 1.960. So 1.96 is the corresponding z-score that's attached to this area here. So if I want to know z sub 0 0.025, I know the answer is 1.96. All right, and just one more, kind of an abstract one that doesn't involve actual numbers. What if I 
did a similar drawing. And I said that I was looking for z alpha divided by 2. How much area would be in this tail here? How much area would be in that tail here? Well, the subscript here is alpha over 2. Remember that the area here would be alpha over 2. It's that simple. Whatever you see here as a subscript is what the area you have in the tail beyond that point on the number line. And that's it. That's the idea of critical z-value notation.